What's up, you two? This is Robert Trey Coney Astro. They have a join the day. Me once again. We open in the week and we open with bangers, man. I'm so happy and that we literally start with a rifle this week. Once again, guys, do not miss these bangers, do not miss opportunities because money is there to grab. I talked about last night about STI, right? If you guys watch the video, again, this is why I say don't miss the videos because I put a lot of good information in there. A lot of setups sometimes are you know, that we already played out, but there still has some type of continuation to, you know, just that if you watch the video, literally, if you look here, I talk about SDI and go look the video, go look at, two, you know, 11 minutes when I was when I, when I was going over it. The stock was sitting at 1.74, $2 on after hours, 20%. And I told you guys how the amount of opportunity of this stock, the room that this stock has today, it was, it was there because we had a volume, we have other fundamentals back in this movement. And today, what do you think? And we literally open and we literally spike all the way up to 3.64. It's still playing out pretty nice. And not only this, because these opportunities are only given again to my students very, very early. And I'm going to show you why. We were playing SDI super early, you know, couple like last week, as you can see here on the, um, on me on my tab, you can see we've been trading SDI since 1.60, as you can see on March 15. Right, we make some money of this, but we we'll still held for the this week, and not even there. We still, you know, replay it again. You know, with scalping, we you know took opportunity as well this morning. You can see here today, eight forty in the morning. I put him how a banger was, and we, you know those that held with me over the weekend, and was if those that were trying to day trade it, there's still opportunity was there. You know, we're looking at three point eight break as you can see here. I went told my students it was cool gox plus it then, and ended up going as high as three thirty. 348 man with circle scale profits we make some good amount of money right always there opportunities and not in the day besides only sti we trade tphss as you can see here i told them that how it was very overextended but the price action was quite interesting i like the volume we were looking for that 0 28.50 breakout right we ended up having a nice breakout as you can see here all the way down to you know uh to 37 cents from 28 cents man i know the 40 percent Right, man, until opportunities were there, we were banking, we were, you know, killing it this morning. So, again, don't miss this trade, guys. You want to have my all my trades, my guidance, my live trades, all those things are on the Alpha community. Join up, link is on the description. All right, but what else do we have for this week, man? It's going to be quite interesting week. We have uh FMC meeting on Wednesday, right? I told you guys how today and tomorrow is going to be the best day to trade, my opinion, because we won't have that extra volatility that we're going to have on Wednesday. So, really quick to review what I have tomorrow. You know, we only have a couple of reports. We have housing stores and building permits tomorrow, 8.30 in the morning, although they're not moving market events. Something that you want to keep an eye on. So tomorrow, I think, in my opinion, we're going to have this sub topic continuation that we had today, right? We did not have like a crazy moment today, but there were, you know, good opportunities. Every single day as well, I do pull my levels for options, you know, SPY, general guidance, I put it in different places, but also trade Tesla and NVIDIA. The D-Day played out pretty, pretty nice. So this morning, as you can see here, I told my, you told everybody, all of you guys, MSTNs, that you know, spy had a nice go up. We have our board of our levels, you know, calls and puts. If we go look at the chart, it was quite interesting to see, you know, spy tried to break up, ended up going to 515.48. So we technically had a little quick scalp on our break of our calls, but we're not enough. Price section was flat, was very low. You know, we kind of noticed that this is why price section is something that I cannot be taught something that you're going to learn with time, with experience, with screening time, right? That is going to help you to understand more price action. But later on in the day, as you can see here, there was some type of opportunities, the market overall downtrend, but it was very, very low, right? So that's why sometimes when the level doesn't hit, because we're trying to look for, you know, bigger flush downs or bigger breakouts, you, this fine. You don't have to overtrade it. You don't have to force it trade. It's better to wait or, you know, look for better setups, right? Again, what are we looking for tomorrow? If we zoom out a little bit and we look the four hour chart on SPY, you can see we haven't broke the trend yet. We, we keep going back and forward on this. We keep, you know, spiking. We keep, you know, coming back down, test the EMAs. We keep bouncing. We keep doing that, you know, but at some point things can have to break. So this is what we call the consolidation phase. Now we need bigger events like the one that we have on Wednesday, which is, you know, power speaking to break out. Either we're going to break out or we're going to flush down. Right? So but how can we gauge this? We need to look for clear levels. So at least for tomorrow, what I can tell you guys is that if we want to look some type of breakout, what I'm going to look for tomorrow is if we do break 515.48, which is today's highs, then I'm going to be bullish for the day, right? If we not, if we actually pull back 
and we do break the 510.61, which is a 60 MA, I'm gonna be bearish. Now you do can see that it's some selling pressure closing. So there is a possibility that we're gonna be right on pre-market or we can also have a bounce, right? You know, it's very unpredictable. You know, pre-markets are very, very unpredictable. But overall, we're gonna be ready for tomorrow, right? Tesla as well. Very nice opportunity today. I told you guys, like nothing goes up forever and nothing drops forever. We're gonna have to bounce. And I told you guys how very important it was this 160 area. I even told you guys there was a possible double bottom play out today. We literally had this one play out. We gotta go up, bull step in. That was a nice play. I have my levels in the morning. Look at here. My students, I told them 8.42 in the morning. I was looking. There was an interest recovery. But if the move were going to hold, we needed to break 171.28 break. Look at that. We play out this at the morning, and they are breaking out, and we went as high. We know we won't retest that 175.5 resistance. So we play out pretty nice. We make some good profits. Remember, you always got to trim profits. You cannot be greedy, right? At the same time, we did play out both directions we did have a, a, a pullback in the morning so we play but you have to understand that you can play both sides right look at the chart and tesla it did fall in the morning and it also broke our levels you see run from 169 all the way to 165.9 and if we go back to our levels right you can see that here that we have the 169.03 break for puts so once you break puts you make your money, you reassess the market. And if you do notice that the market is scrolling up, there are buyers, you know, stepping in, you check your volume bars, then you got to readapt. You remember, you are a, you're the trader. You know, you are the one adapting to the market. The market won't adapt to your needs. You have to adapt. So we ended up, you know, banking for both directions. And this is why we have we have to, again, follow price action and where the market is going. So Tesla did pretty good. Now, if we zoom out and we, you know, analyze what's happening for tomorrow, right? It's a good thing that it tells the lead, you know, bounce and again close about a 20 MA. But of course, if we want to see more continuation. Tesla need to do two things. One, stay above 170. And if tomorrow breaks 175.05 and the 176.59, which is a 60 MA, then we might have more upside. We probably gonna contest the 180s. That is if that's happening. If not, if Tesla's unable to bring, you know, break that 175, we most likely gonna pull back and more likely we're gonna retest support. At 169.9, right? we're gonna retest 170 areas. Right? So that is a possibility. So check that, you know, keep an eye on those levels and be ready for that for tomorrow. All right. NVIDIA play out pretty nice. Once again, another stock that it's all about following the levels, guys. NVIDIA, all the semiconductors have both had a not had a red day. Well, I mean, nice day if you were short in this. But as well, we got opportunities for both directions, right? If you look my levels on NVIDIA, if you were in the community. I had, and I even actually talked about this on, 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 you know, last night video, and I told you how the bulls needed to stay above 900, because 900 is a strong psychological level for them. And you can see here in the morning, I had, I told you, and rem I remind that to my students, I went there and pulled a 905 break for calls, because that was the previous highs. Once we broke 905, what didn't happen? Video pushed all the way down to 924, the first part of the morning. You went from 905 to 924, that is a nice profit. I and mean, we're talking about once we were at 9, you know, oh, $19, $18, depending on your entry, guys, that's a quite the amount of money that you can have made. It's all about execute, trust your level, trust your indicators, trust the levels, right? Don't be missing out money because there is money everywhere. Now, of course, like I said, you have to reassess, you have to readapt to the market. Once the media pullback, the market starts turning red. What do you do? You look for the next level. We did have media break, 889.62, 20 MA. So the 20 MA was for break for puts. So we go back to the charts and look, once it broke the 20 May, right? Once we broke 900s, we already know that 900 was like a level. Once we broke the 889, right? You could have started, you know, adding to your puts. And we ended up going as low as 870.85. So pretty much $19, $20 from our high, you know, from, from the breakout, right? Again, you can make money in both directions. You see how cannot marry one direction because you can play both. But you need to understand where are the levels, how to get to them, and of course, obviously, how to read your indicators properly, right? Now, what we can see for the media, since we had this pullback, once again, we're coming back to test the 60 MA on the four hour chart. It's very critical because now, if we do break it, I think that NVIDIA can definitely flush down, right? You can see we are pretty much, you know, kind of like bouncing around this 160, 150 area. So, this is going to be a top level, right? But of course, if NVIDIA breaks at 50s, I can say that we're going to have a huge, huge flush down, right? Go look at the daily chart. And BDA start to accumulate in selling pressure, so that's not a good sign for the bulls. But again, we will see how that performs, right? And uh, 
right let's see let's, let's see how it is tomorrow now i have a couple of you know, updates to you guys i have a stock that i do want to talk to you guys because i think this is a great opportunity as well and i'm going to be loading it up on this i'm already actually we played out on the alpha community once again this is what you do not want to miss you know the opportunities to be on the be on the alpha community because we are early on the stakes and i want to say one of them is l-i-c-y this stock in particular came out of on our scanners on march 12 as you can see here we already got a news about they were announcing a 75 million strategic investment from Glencore, right? So we're like, all right, that sounds that sounds pretty big. And we actually look, I look into the stock. When I look into LSCY, I was like, look, this is a 130 million float. It's been being down for so long. There is a gap to fill, right? And of course, we have this you know accumulation for so long. And now we have a 75 million you know, in strategic investments. Well, that is definitely something, right? Today we were almost at one fifty percent up from the breakout in. Right, if you look in the past, we play at this early from 60 cents. You can see here my alert on March 12th, LSY 60 point for that break breakout. Since then, we're still played out, right? Since then, we were just making moves. We you know we were making opportunities there, we're making some trades. But look at that. You see here on the right, you know, students, you know, talking about we're making, you know, we're making money about this. Later on, there we trade again from 72 cents. We keep trading it. We make money about a 79 cents. We, you know, you can see how we're making profits as you keep going up 90 cents, right? So we've been on this early, right? But I decided, you know, I want to talk about this here now for you guys because I think that we are for another big move. Remember, there is a gap that hasn't been filled, right? If you go look on the chart and daily chart, you see this gap, it hasn't filled completely. It's from 125 to 1.43. And Right, you can see that the 200 million on the daily charts at 221. Right, so the risk reward here is pretty good. I don't think that we are done. Right, look, the daily chart, the RSI is 79, so we have more room to go. And again, I don't think that agree with that investment. Uh, and of course, with this possible government, you know, governmental uh, funding that they're expecting, I think that this is can be a good thing. Right, the bottom already, I mean, it's Monday, and if you go look at the bottom, it's today was a 40.82 million bottom today, and the average volume is a 6.32. Right. So we're almost seven times, six, seven times already the daily volume, right? And this is already just, I remember the opinion, this is just started. You just got to be patient enough and you follow the chart. Now, look at the DD. That's what I'm saying. Not only this, they already report earnings. A couple of things that, you know, I want to top on this, you know, the revenue for year rose 11%, 18.3 million, with a notable 30% increase in the product on the side of revenue, which is a 23.6 million, right? So that is good for them, right? That's only one thing. But once again, look at their stats. I was looking at these earnings, the BDPS, which is a great thing. So we have earnings, we have investments, right? The only thing that I want to I want to put in the table is that they already they also filed for the S three. What's an S three? It's a shell offering, right? So they they filed for the shell offering on. Let me really quick pull it out for you guys. Yeah, that was two days ago. They did that on Saturday. Uh, so a stock they they're doing this because the shell offering is not an effective offering. It would mean that. Yes, they might drop an offering, but of course they don't. They don't have a day. They will do it when they need it. Right now, in my opinion, they don't need it because again, they already have the investment for you know Glencore. And if you can see this already came out, go right, go look at the filings. Right, the S thirteen they already came out on March thirteen, so it, it, that just really went through. So I'm telling you, they are not ready to drop an offering. If it won't be smart for them as a company, you cannot kill your shareholders right now. You are the, you have the momentum, you have the breakout. You want to squeeze the short. You want to pull, you know, take the advantage, get this cash. So, yes, in my opinion, I think that, yes, they might have, they might drop the offering, but not now. It's not as smart for them, right? So, company, they need to see this, you know, take opportunity. They're probably going to push, in my opinion. We're probably going to see, you know, fill this gap first. Maybe tapping, you know, this 180s, 170, in my opinion. Of course, with momentum, we can even go much higher. Like, to, like I said, you know, the 221, the EMA, the 200, may acts like the magnet one. There is, you know, nice breakout. So, that is a possibility as well. And maybe then at that point, again, you might want to consider taking profits because that shell offering might come anytime. But again, it's not what I think is going to take guys. I want to put that away. You have to make your own DD. It's only risk. I'm just putting out there for your own convenience, guys. But again, if you have any question about this, please let me know. Send me a DM, talk me in the chat, drop me a comment in the video, guys. You know, this week is going to be crazy, so let's kill it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, guys. We have more to talk, more ideas, more bangers coming out here and there. And again, I hope to see you guys on Alpha Community because we're crushing it. So join up, link is in the description, and I hope to see you guys tomorrow. All right, guys, take care. Bye. See you guys tomorrow.
What's up guys, this is Juan Pacheco, I'm a guest today. If you guys want to start making some money and achieving those goals and financial freedom you guys are looking for, you need to start investing in yourself, you need to start investing in knowledge, all right? So join me to the Alpha community. I'll be there with you guys, guiding yourself to the market. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow on the market because I'm going to get you guys get some money, all right? So see you guys.